everybody tonight to our candidates evening. Um, my name is Bonnie Wren Burgess. I'll be moderating our candidates here this evening are uh, Tom Sweeney, who is running for assessor, Scott McDermott, town moderator, Osler Pete Peterson, selectman, uh, and George Lester is just joining us. He's going to slide right in, running for planning board. Um, Jerry Potts, running for uh, school committee, and Marianne Sullivan, also running for school committee. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody watching at home as well. Um, I wanted to um, alert everybody that on uh, March 23rd, we have a special town meeting at Medfield High School uh, to consider the uh, debt override on the school, uh, sorry, not on school, on the town um, safety building. Uh, in addition, on March 30th, we have uh, our uh, voting at the center at on Ice House Road from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then our annual town meeting uh, on April 27th, 7.30 p.m. back at the high school. Um, this evening, uh, we hope to inform everybody about the responsibilities of each office, uh, how many members are on the committee, how long a term they'll be serving, um, what is happening of interest uh, to the town on these committees and boards, and uh, obviously to introduce you to the candidates this year for office. Uh, the format for this evening uh, will be each candidate will have three minutes to describe um, their uh, themselves, who they are, where they're, they're, where they're coming from, um, their committee uh, or position that they are um, seeking, um, to share the qualifications, and to perhaps project about his or her role on the committee. Uh, round two, each candidate will have two minutes uh, to talk about major projects and issues uh, in their area. And then round three will be questions uh, that audience members can submit. There have been uh, three by five cards um, distributed to the audience, and uh, we have other members from the Medfield uh, Voters Group who will be um, uh, vetting these questions. So I think we'll just go down the, uh, the table to begin with, and uh, Mr. Sweeney, uh, <coughs> can you talk to us about? Uh, sure, uh, I'd like to start off. My name is Tom Sweeney, and I'd like to thank the group for inviting me down here to tell you a little bit about what we do with the Board of Assessors. Uh, I've been in the Board of Assessors now, I believe, it's either nine or ten years. And I keep arguing with myself because of the way the term runs. But uh, there are three members, myself, uh, Frank Perry, Ed Beard, and uh, this year Ed is the chairman of the board. And we have, uh, it's three years, each, each board member, and it's, uh, each one serves as the chair. So I will become the chair, the one running for election will become the chair in the next year. Uh, my background is that I've been in the real estate business since <coughs> 1967 as an appraiser, real estate broker, uh, and pretty much I worked with uh, in the real estate business, uh, private sector, also in local and state government. State government, I worked for the Department of Revenue for 24 plus years. In the, uh, I was what they call an appraiser, and uh, I was a community advisor, and that came into the financial world, advised communities on their budgeting, and uh, we did, uh, I did, I worked on the implementation of two and a half. That was what I was hired for, that and the full and fair cash value. It was uh, quite an adventure because at the time uh, I was working, Boston had never revalued and they were under a mandate. So when we walked in unannounced, they just didn't want to let us in the door. And they held off and held off for quite a while. So that was 81. They had to do it by 84. So until 83, I think that's the first time we got them to realize that they weren't going to get the the funding, like we do, looking for money coming back on the cherry sheet. Boston gives a big piece of change. And uh, my boss at the time, Ed Collins, says, well, you don't revalue, you know, you're not going to get your monies. So all of a sudden, attention was paid that time to, time to get, so they, <coughs> got, they got revalued in that year. And that was quite a, we did ride the whole city of Boston uh, to uh, manually. Everything was done manually. No computers, pencil, spreadsheet. So that's the type of experience I 
and I worked throughout the Commonwealth. The last uh, nine years, I had uh, all of Norfolk County, all cities and towns that I did review and worked with assessors and accountants and treasurers. Um, I think that's about it right now. I'm, I've enjoyed the board in Midfield. They're a the great board. Thank you very much, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, Mr. McDermott, who is running for uh, town moderator, um, three minutes. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you again for, for hosting. So I am the town moderator. This will be the 15th time that I've stood wow. for election in Medfield. I did uh, two elected terms on the Park and Rec Commission, and this is my 13th time that I am up for election to be town moderator. It's a, I consider it a, a, an honor and really a privilege, and, uh, and it's something that actually I enjoy doing. And... Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we just can continue the the uh, the, the, the good uh, <coughs> fun here in the uh, next uh, couple of months when we have a, a very active town meeting season this year. So the town moderator essentially has I, I, I think of it as having three uh, parts to the job. The first one is the the orchestration of the annual town meeting. Uh, there's some element of that that is goes on before the meeting in terms of uh, becoming acquainted with the uh, the Warren articles and uh, spending a, a, a lot of time with the town officials to make sure that I understand uh, the nature and the form of, of, of those articles. And then on the 17th, we will do an annual walkthrough. Uh, we meet over at the gym uh, with uh, the, the school officials, the custodians, uh, Chief Meany, Mike Sullivan, Carol Mayer, of course, and so we put together a group and we talk about the uh, the orchestration and logistics of of the town meeting to make sure that hopefully the uh, the environment of the event will will go well. And then, of course, on on the evening of uh, of annual and special town meetings, um, <coughs> by statute, is my job to preside and regulate over the over the town meeting, and um, the role has. Uh, some of the elements of, of perhaps being a conductor uh, of an orchestra and a little bit of the elements of being a referee of a, <laughs> of a, of a sporting game. Uh, the requirement is that you are elected uh, every year, that you have to stand for election. I think that that's okay because that's really the, the check and balance on the process because the, the powers and privileges of the moderator are very broad and are largely constrained by, uh, you know, by past precedent and uh, by style and by judgment. <clears throat> and so um, I suppose if uh, there was only one year that didn't go so well, they didn't vote me out. So I guess uh, we'll, we'll see about the future. <laughs> and the third element of the job I think that is important is uh, there's an element of setting the tone. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, as I said, I, you know, I have a passion for Medfield and I have a, a, you know, a passion for democratic process. And you know, to see those come together in a town meeting has really uh, been great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McDermott. Uh, next, we have uh, Osler Pete Peterson, uh, our candidate for Selectman. Mr. Peterson. Thank you very much, Bonnie. And uh, I am a, a candidate for re-election for Selectman. Uh, I have been a Selectman now actually for 15 years. Um, and so this would be, uh, I'm looking for, a, I guess, a sixth term as Selectman. Technically, the Selectman are the uh, chief executive of the town. What that uh, legally means is that we're supposed to be running the town government. In reality, the selectmen do not run the town government. We make the policies, really, and we, and we set the uh, policies as opposed to running it. Uh, before Mike Sullivan came, I gather that the selectmen actually did run the town, and they divvied up the, uh, the, the tasks in terms of running each of the departments. Uh, but that's not really the way it, it, it runs today. It, we have uh, a town administrator. We have an assistant town administrator. We have... Uh, uh, someone actually uh, working with them, and so that the the selectmen are really just a policy making uh, group. Um, <clears throat> and but and, and I guess our our policies run over the whole gambit of the town. Um, I mean, we have a, a a wastewater treatment plant that's in my mind is like a like a miniature factory. When you go down there, it's a very sort of high tech factory actually. Um, and, and I suppose technically, since we run the town, we're in charge of that sort of thing as well. But we don't have anything to do with the schools, um, but everything else. Uh, but when you actually come to a selectman's meeting, what you'll find is that a lot of the things that we do are fairly routine. We, we give permission for people to put signs out along the public way in certain sections of the town for, for events. Um, we give permission for people to serve alcohol <coughs> in, uh, in certain buildings that are owned by the town. A lot of it is very mundane of that sort. Uh, 
the reality is that you can sort of make of the job what you want to do. Um, when I first became a selectman and I was asking selectmen from other towns how much time they spent on the job and they were telling me 40 hours a week or more, I was a little shocked because I had another job. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it, it, it is the sort of a, a job where you can actually, uh, you can initiate things. Um, the things that, that, that I think have worked out well for the town that, that I thought were important to get going was the Energy Committee, um, the Lyme Disease Study Committee. Um, and it's, it's very, it's the sort of position where you can actually take an idea like that and, and, and see it uh, actually succeed and, and work well for the town. Uh, so there's sort of, it's sort of amorphous in that standpoint. I mean, technically you could just go to meetings, I suppose, and, uh, uh, and it would be a, a two hour a week job maybe or something of that sort. But um, if, if you wanna make it more than that, you certainly can. Um, and so that uh, we're sort of the, and there are a lot of ceremonial things that we do. We go to all of the uh, uh, Scout, uh, Eagle Scout Awards, Gold Awards for the girls and uh, uh, so there's the ceremonial, but there's also this opportunity to really affect some change in town, which is what we uh, try to do. And sometimes we have to moderate sports a bit at our meetings, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. Thank you very much, Mr. Peterson. Uh, next we have George Lester, uh, candidate for planning board. And uh, three minutes, Mr. Lester. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Um, thanks, I'm glad to be here. Um, I think I have the longest tenure of anybody because I've, I've been 20 years on the planning board, so I'll be going on my, uh, fifth five-year term if I'm re-elected. Um, the planning board is a, um, is a board uh, that every town has is created, um, dictated by statute. We have certain functions to administer state law or, or um, um, state regulatory laws pertaining to zoning and, pl and subdivision control and um, we administer certain town bylaws as well. In, um, under Mass General Laws Chapter 41, we regulate the subdivision of land when someone has a large parcel and wants to cut it up into lots and create new public ways or new ways to access the roads. We have rules and regulations that define the, 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 um, the way a road is laid out and so on and so forth. Um, under M Chapter 40, which is the um, the zoning law of Massachusetts. We propose new zoning bylaws in town. We don't um, administer the zoning bylaws, that's the, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals, mm -hmm. but we propose new ones and then they are voted on at um, town meeting. Um, we also have a function to administer what's called a site plan review, which is a um, process for larger multifamily developments and commercial developments to make sure that they, um, they, they don't have adverse impacts on, on the environment, um, traffic, noise, drainage issues, and that kind of thing. We, um, um, we also uh, have functions under the town sign bylaw, which uh, regulates the type of signs. You know, you see carved wooden signs on granite posts around the center of town. That's something we mandate as part of our, uh, as part of, as part of our function, as opposed to, you know, big, internally illuminated glowing signs um, at night. Um, and then we have a general function for um, uh, general planning and advisory to the town. So we get involved in things like the big picture for Medfield State Hospital reuse and redevelopment. Um, anyway, I've very much enjoyed uh, my tenure and I look forward to doing it again. We have a great group. There's five members of the board and we each serve, um, you serve a five year term. Um, we have a nice mix of people on the board with the types of skills that are useful. A couple of us are attorneys. I'm, I'm an attorney in Boston. Um, two of us have engineering and construction backgrounds. The other uh, member is a project developer background. So we have a lot of um, skills that I think complement each other in evaluating uh, proposals. My goal has always been to try to help preserve a character of Medfield in um, both in the subdivisions and in the downtown business area because we do what we can to facilitate downtown business development. Thank you very much Mr. Lester. Uh, next uh, we have our first candidate in our only contested <coughs> race uh, Mr. Uh, Jerry Potts and so Mr. Potts three minutes. Thank you Bonnie. Um, I do want to thank Bonnie and the Medfield Voter Organization for holding this event. Um, 
you know, running against an incumbent in the state of Massachusetts named Sullivan. Um, some could question my intelligence. Um, and without a forum like this to be able to share ideas, uh, it, would, it would be difficult. I also want to thank Mary Ann and the current school committee. Um, this town runs by volunteers. Um, we have so many passionate, engaged citizens in so many different places, and the school committee certainly is that. And, and Mary Ann, um, over the last few years, uh, three years, has, has shown that. Um, quickly, my background, I've lived in Medfield for 23 years. Um, I grew up over the tracks in Dover, um, so the mean streets of, uh, uh, and our Thanksgiving Day rival of, of Medfield. Uh, but for 23 years I've been here, I have three kids, age 21, 17, and 13. Um, my 17-year-old who backed into my car tonight, so just before coming here. So, um, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good way to start the evening. Uh, but all have been educated in the, in the Medfield school systems, and, uh, um, and I've seen firsthand what a great Medfield education is all about. Um, the school committee, um, I'll touch briefly on it. Um, it's a, a five-person committee. Um, it's three years uh, that you serve. Um, and the school committee is really the voice of our community. Um, it represents our values. It oversees the goals, the policies um, for the schools. It hires and did a very nice job of hiring a great superintendent, uh, Dr. Marsden. Um, it, it evaluates the superintendent and evaluates the community, um, how we're doing against those goals that are stated for the schools. In addition to that, um, it's responsible for the finances, for the budget, for, for the uh, collective bargaining agreement. Um, and uh, I'll, there are a few other responsibilities, but since I only have about a minute left, I'll get into a little on, on why I'm actually running. Um, so in starting to consider running for school committee, um, my background in addition to 23 years, I've served 11 years on the Midfield Youth Baseball and Softball Board, um, four years as president. Um, I've worked 30 years in corporate America and finance. Um, for the last three years, I've taught at Boston College in the Carroll School of Management and Business Strategy. Um, I'm also a chair of the board of an organization, PASIM in Cambridge. So I take commitment pretty, pretty seriously. And when I look at uh, the opportunities for our school committee, um, you know, I think the thing that I can probably bring the most perspective to when I um, look at our current school committee site, um, that's really the voice to the community of what we do, the goals, um, the plans, how we're measuring, how our kids are doing. And I encourage you to go to potsforschools.com and look. I put a best practices there where you can see what other towns are doing. And I think we can do better. And that's what I'm hoping to share tonight on some of those ideas that we can do better. Thank you, Mr. Potts. Um, and last, uh, we have Marianne Sullivan, um, can incumbent and candidate for uh, school committee. Well, thank you. And um, thank you for hosting this evening and inviting me. And I want to thank everyone who is actually attending tonight. Um, and I think um, I can speak to what the school committee does because I have served on the school committee for the past three years. I was elected in 2012. Um, first, a little bit about the goals and the policies of the school committee. Um, we are responsible for um, finance in, in the fact that we advocate for things that we believe should be in the school department's budget. We are responsible and we hired, um, I was on the search committee for Dr. Marsden. Um, to hire and evaluate the superintendent. We're also, as Jerry said, we're responsible for collected, collective bargaining agreements of which I've personally experienced. I haven't just seen it um, as a spectator or a bystander, but I've been involved in the collective bargaining um, agreements and proud of those. Um, professional development and what we're doing with our teachers and how we're teaching them or giving them <coughs> exposure to how to teach our children and do what they do better. Um, is an important goal of the school committee. Um, we review the site councils of each of the schools. They present our plans. We have input on the site councils. Um, and we also have um, input on curriculum. What are we teaching our kids? Are we um, advancing the way that we want our kids to advance? Um, so we are trying to look at the whole picture and the whole child that we're educating. Um, as far as my background, I, um, I'm an attorney. I was a um, prosecutor in Suffolk County under Ralph Martin. And um, then I became a special assistant attorney general where I prosecuted the sexually dangerous person crimes for the state. Um, so I have extensive trial experience. It was a very rewarding career where I actually 
dedicated my career, um, and certainly didn't make a lot of money, so I dedicated my career to protecting um, those people that I felt were vulnerable and that needed protection in our society. Um, when I started my career as a Medfield mom, I felt that that dedication was equally important. I feel that the children in our system are still vulnerable people. They deserve our dedication, our passion, and I haven't just been a bystander, I've lived it. I have been CSA president, secretary. I have been on the site councils that I am now reviewing their plans. I have done the work. I have been on the superintendent's advisory council. I also talk very quickly because I have about a minute or 30 seconds left. I've walked the walk. I haven't just um, been a bystander. And I think um, it's been a privilege. It's been an honor. And hopefully the next three years will be um, equally as um, rewarding and robust in a great community. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Thank you. Next, what we're going to be doing this evening is each candidate will have two minutes to talk about um, major projects happening in their area uh, and major goals that they would have for their um, term. Uh, again, I think we'll just go right down, down, the, down the table. So, Mr. Sweeney. May I ask a question before he continues? Um, not, no, there'll be opportunity later on to ask questions. Opportunity to question the candidate? Yep, via submitting your questions on the cards. Board of Assessment now, of course, we're preparing for town meeting. I was going to say. We've got the overlay <laughs> account that we have to account for. And there are a lot of funds that are transferred to overlay to different areas. So we're working along with the treasurer, the accountant, and uh, Mr. Sullivan, the assistant. Uh, that we do that. That's, that's a big thing for us right now. We have a new assessor on board. Today, Stan Bergeron, we had a uh, retirement uh, party for him. He has left the town after 37 years. Uh, he's going to be dearly missed, and it's a crucial time where we're going to be going through a revaluation. That's the other thing, too. So I'm going to be the chairman, like I had, spoke, had said before, uh, and that's going to be crucial, too, for me. So it's, uh, it's, it's big time for us. Every year is a big time this time of year because we deal. It's an ongoing thing. Financing never changes. We have to borrow. And that's why we deal with the treasurer. We want to make sure that the, the borrowing is right uh, at the right time, too, because uh, we can see some increases. Uh, a lot of people are not going to be happy with what's going to happen this year because you're going to see an increase in your tax bill. No question. We don't know how much it's going to be. It's going to be what you spend at town meeting. That's going to create what's going to happen. So if you see the, the things that are going to happen, you pay attention. Please question everybody on the financial end of this. It's crucial. It's not only us. That's the problem. Everybody sits there and everybody votes, and you pay for it. So that's, that's really what our, our big thing is. And <coughs> lastly, please vote for me. I hate to get beat up with blanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Um, Ms. McDermott. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and let me just circle around, if I could, to my. Uh, uh, I was one of. The, I did one of those things where I said there were three parts to the job, but I only mentioned uh, two of them. I talked about conducting and orchestrating the uh, town meetings, and I also talked about setting the tone. But in the middle, of course, is the appointment of the members of the warrant committee. So that's the exclusive authority of the uh, moderator, and I've now appointed uh, 29 of our our citizens over the last uh, 13 years to. Uh, uh, be a part of, of that very dedicated committee, nine members at a time. And uh, so I work hand in hand with them, beginning with an orientation in the fall right up through the, the town <clears throat> meeting. So I, I just want to recognize them. In terms of uh, upcoming activity, I have the, the last uh, special town meeting of the current term, of course, on Monday, March 23rd. Mm -hmm. We have two articles. One is a, around a, uh, an initiative to appropriate funds for a solar uh, photovoltaic uh, array in town and the second one of course is the vote to consider uh, the appropriation of the funds to construct a, uh, a new public safety building so that's you know very exciting I like to it's rare I've done five special town meetings it's nice to have a town meeting where you have a, a limited number of topics and you can pro allow for the kind of discourse and debate and uh, back and forth uh, you know to really consider an important uh, a really important initiative like that and then, of course, uh, a month following uh, the election, the election is on March 30th, 
at the end of the month uh, on the fourth Tuesday, the last, uh, excuse me, the last Monday of April, we have our annual town meeting. Uh, we average somewhere between 36 and 42 articles, and, and we, we try to conduct all of our town affairs in the course of an evening, and uh, so that requires a real balance between uh, allowing for that open discourse and trying to provide for the expediency to uh, move right through the meeting. So that, that tends to be a little challenging in that regard. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Thank you so much. The main things that the selectmen are working on at the moment have to do with the, uh, first off, I think I would say the Medfield State Hospital. Uh, we completed the purchase of that. Now we've got to figure out what to do with that. We've got a committee that's studying that and is supposed to report back. The original timeline was that we were supposed to have uh, information back from them in August, uh, but I, they, they've taken a little bit longer than they planned on taking to uh, hire their planner to work with them, so I don't know that we'll actually get their information until maybe September. Um, and then months after that, we'll actually try to actualize the plan that they come up with. Um, the uh, selectmen are looking to create a system that gets the information out of the townhouse and pushed out to residents in a way that makes it easy for people to get information about the town. Um, there's an awful lot of information in this building that unfortunately doesn't get out to residents. And uh, the second thing on, on the information goal that we have this year is to redo the website and make the website more user friendly. It, there should be a system where uh, people can sign up and just get things delivered to them. You can't expect people to come to meetings about everything. Uh, the selectmen are looking to have a townwide master plan done. There's some benefit in the land disposition agreement for the state hospital if we do that. Uh, and it makes sense, I guess, just to have a plan as to how we're gonna use all everything in town. Uh, we're trying to get five-year plans out of all the department heads and the committees. Uh, we're trying to implement an affordable housing plan. <coughs> We're looking to uh, get bylaws that we might need to deal with the state hospital development. We're looking to do solar photovoltaic. We're trying to increase recycling. We're trying to figure out a way to do uh, property tax relief for seniors. We're looking for ways to save money for the town, always trying to save money, uh, trying to make the downtown better, uh, looking at maybe perhaps design review for the uh, downtown, certainly trying to figure out how to solve the traffic problems in the downtown, and we're also looking to support the public safety building. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Lester. Thank you. Um, well, first, let me start with the goals on the planning yeah. board and, some, and so also some of what my <laughs> goals are. In general, um, with, <clears throat> the, with the larger subdivisions, the more residential subdivisions, our goals are to um, enforce um, the, the regulations that we have uh, related to how the roads are designed, how lots are laid out, in a way that preserves the character of the town and, and shows that we're serious about um, um, standards for development um, in the town. Um, uh, for uh, more of the commercial projects, our goals are uh, in the downtown, we try to support business, positive business development, but make, uh, uh, again, through the site plan review process, um, create a positive character, um, make the appearance attractive so that um, it, you know, it contributes to an overall vibrant downtown community. Um, we also have a goal to, um, we're always working on improvements to the zoning laws and we have ser a series of articles that will be coming up this year at town meeting that help with clarifying some definitions and some of the rules for zoning. Um, and then um, one of my priorities on the, on the board, and this is good because like I say, we have a very complementary group of people on the board who have different interests and backgrounds. And one of my more of the background is in preserving open space and trails. And so where that fits into a uh, subdivision plan or uh, something, that's kind of like where I stick my nose in and, um, and advocate uh, for the interests of the town. Um, just some examples of projects. Um, um, we haven't had a lot of big subdivisions lately. They tend to be more like four to six lots. Um, the Redgate Farm is an example of where we went through a subdivision process. Ultimately, the town acquired that land, um, but it was we had to go through the process to establish what the subdivision design would have been, and that has set the value for the town to be able to acquire it. Um, more of the commercial downtown projects, um, the Brothers Marketplace, Starbucks, and others, we all were very um, uh, intimately involved in the design and the, the impact, making sure the impact is positive of those, of those developments. 
Thank you, Mr. Lester. Uh, Mr. Potts, your turn. So we go from three minutes to two minutes, so we'll That's talk right. even faster. All right, this. right. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I mentioned is I teach business strategy at Boston College, and so my interest in looking at the school committee, the first thing that I did when I was going to run was to try to get as much of an understanding of what the school goals were. And Marianne mentioned that the goals are, in fact, the responsibility for the school committee, as are the policies. And the first thing that I realized when I went online and started looking at it is that there aren't any published district goals. And there also are only five policies. Um, and as I looked at other towns like Dover, Sherburne, Westwood, um, Wayland, Lexington, virtually every single one of them, when you went to that site, you got a very clear understanding of what the school committee's goals were. The superintendent has an excellent entry plan, and that was published this past week, I think, with some support from uh, recent communications that might have been going, going out on this very topic. But I always look at an organization, start with the goals, things like budget, um, decisions um, that the community makes on what should be in the curriculum starts with the goals. So I'd encourage you to go to the Medfield School Committee site. I'd also encourage you to go to my site on potsforschools.com, look at best practices, and go through a compilation of about 20 different places that I've put links that you can compare for yourself, because we have a limited window tonight to do that. I think when I did that, I was disappointed because I like to think that Medfield leads in almost everything we do. We have great schools. So I was expecting when I went to the school committee site that we would have a really well articulated plan and goals. Um, and when I didn't see that, that's when I started looking at, at what other schools were doing, talking to school committee members in other towns, teachers in our community. I think we can do better. And that's what I think I can bring to this process. I've got a proven track record in business. I teach business strategy. I understand the, the need to have goals and to articulate, articulate those transparently to the constituents, to our parents, to our kids, so that we have clear indication of, of what we're trying to do. Thank you, uh, Mr. Potts. And Ms. Sullivan. Um, so I can actually speak to the goals of the school committee in the district um, from having participated in those goals. Our goals are um, set forth. We've been lucky enough to have a new superintendent for the past. The first year was his um, kind of getting used to year. Um, and I've had the benefit of working with a long um, standing <coughs> superintendent and a new superintendent. And um, the difference in the district, I can say, having experienced both has been remarkable. And the, and the difference and um, the budget exposure that we've had and the explanation of the budget, the review of our policies, of which I'm on the policy review committee. Um, it's a process of going through legal and then us reviewing the policies, voting on them. It has been remarkable in the short time that Dr. Mars Dr. Marsden has been um, the superintendent for our district. I think look going forward, I think without a doubt our website can be better. A lot of the towns that Jerry has mentioned has a full-time webmaster that they pay significant sums to design their websites. In Medfield, we don't do that. Um, and we don't do it for a reason. We are fiscally responsible in Medfield. Um, and I think the school committee prides ourselves on being fiscally responsible in Medfield. We do a lot with not a big budget as far as what we do in our schools. I think that's important to understand. Um, and when you look at um, Dr. Marsden's entry plan, I think you can see the goals that he has set forth as far as full day kindergarten, which we've accomplished, um, the language, technology. I think our goal going forward, in addition to kind of the already set goals, a high school turf, um, integrating, testing with the whole child, is to look at um, some of the, the future, the future um, goals as far as um, integrating <coughs> some of those testing things with the entire child, um, which is something that the school committee definitely values. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. So now we're going to move on to questions from the audience. And for the moderator, um, it's a, it seems like an excellent question to me. What skills do you look for and think are important for members on the Warrant Committee? That is an excellent question, and uh, the f the first thing that I look for is actually not a skill; it's a, it's a it's a perspective that they would have uh, that is a kind of a town wide perspective that is across uh, issues. I look for people who care about all of the elements that add up to the character of town. You know, education, 
uh, open space, uh, senior citizens, our, our commercial activity. So I'm really looking for people who are not uh, single issue oriented, uh, but that could sit on that panel. I look for people who are collaborative, that will work well. I think it, uh, of it as a deliberative body in which uh, it's important that it has a dynamic. So uh, in, in terms of, uh, I spend time when I interview the folks and to make sure that I think they would fit into that dynamic, uh, I look for commitment. Uh, from because as you know throughout the winter on Tuesday nights they're downstairs and uh, there's a lot of work associated over a four or five month period of time with being a member of a of the Warren Committee. From a skills perspective we do look for balance we look for you know uh, across the board for people who have some financial background uh, for certain uh, and for people who have experiences across other agencies within the, the, the town because the Warren Committee members are uh, they each get a, a, an agency within the town to uh, review, and so we look for some varied uh, expertise and interest in that. I try to uh, I try to balance uh, items, of, I mean elements of of, uh, of gender, and uh, try to get different constituencies uh, over the past in terms of my appointment from across the the perspectives that come from people who are new to town and have young kids to people who have been here and having their kids educating the schools and people who. Uh, don't ha have children and not here with a family and people who uh, whose family have uh, kind of moved off to other parts so uh, and try to find that balance uh, on the on the committee thank you very much Ms. McDermott um, the next question is for everybody except Mr. McDermott and it is uh, would like to get your opinions uh, uh, pro or con <coughs> about the proposed new um, public safety building that would house the um, uh, Police Department and Fire Department, um, and we'll start off with uh, Mr. Sweeney. Well, we've been talking about this uh, as a group, the assessors. We're concerned too because whatever's going to go on the tax rate, it's going to be borrowed over time, but it's still going to portion of it is, and that's what I was talking about before was this increase. You're going to be hit with interest this year. Uh, you're going to be hit with interest on the state hospital. I believe, uh, I don't think we've got the print whole principle yet on that, on the borrowing. I think that's going to be borrowed this year, along with the 700000 is proposed for this photovoltaic, I can't say it, system. That's, I heard it was 700000 right now, because that can change. That's just a, and the public safety is upwards of $22 million. So that's why I say you got to, that's what we're looking at. And we're looking to see what the impact is because we can only, you can only get so much money out of out of uh, and what's coming back from the governor this year and the cherry sheet. Uh, everybody says it's going to be good, but uh, every time I listen to the governor, I don't think so. I'm uh, up, I'm not optimistic about it. That's a typical accessor. It's a good it's a good business to be that way. Believe me, because you don't want to be too happy because you don't want something to be. Uh, Come down on you. That's gonna. You'll have to really eat. I'm not gonna eat crow this year. But uh, won't be surprised. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, Mr. Peterson. I, I'm in favor of the uh, new public safety building. It the uh, fire department and the police department have uh, actually had to wait way longer than they should have probably for uh, for a new facility. The uh, facilities that we have are woefully inadequate, uh, and we're. We're really kind of imposing on the firefighters and the and the police to live in a facility <clears throat> that is is so antiquated. It's always a problem of, of how do you pay for things. Um, the, the first year that I was a selectman, the schools uh, announced the need to build three new schools that were going to cost $56 million. And, and the first thing I did when I heard that was pull my hair out and say, how can we afford that? Um, but we have. We've done it. Um, and we have three excellent schools as a result of, of uh, what the town did back 15 years ago or so. Um, it, I mean, nobody wants to pay for the new public safety building, but the, the alternative to have an ongoing inadequate facility is just really not a, a, a reasonable course to take. So I think that we, actually, we need to support it. We need to uh, just accept the fact that we, we, we're going to have to pay for, uh, for a new facility. There are certain things that are coming off of the, uh, the debt that the town is paying at the moment, and so that it, it kind of fits in a little bit better in terms of our overall debt. Um, the, those schools that we built are starting to cycle off uh, the, the town debt, and so that uh, I, th I think that it's doable. It's, it's, not, it's not 
totally palatable, but I think that we need to do it. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lester. Um, thanks, Barney. Um, the, I know for, uh, the, the decision whether or not to actually build it in the fiscal impact is really beyond the pay grade of the, the planning board. I feel, <laughs> um, that's, that's what these guys, um, town meeting makes the decision and, and the selectmen provide the guidance on, on, on whether they feel the town should actually go forward with the project. Our role is evaluating what we call the site plan review, which is making sure that the proposal as it's laid out um, has the minimal or no negative impacts um, in areas of traffic, parking, drainage, uh, pollution, light, and noise. So we held a series of hearings that evaluated, you know, how the lighting might affect the neighbors and the traffic patterns, and um, and that's where we had our input, and we felt that it, we came out with a positive, um, you know, p uh, a, a positive project that if we're going to go forward with it, addresses all those impacts. Great. Okay. Um, anything to add, Mr. Potts? I think this is one of those issues that I, I go back to planning and goal setting. Um, we have so many competing demands right now. Um, Dr. Marsden put forward a 5.4% increase with the school committee for the schools, and I support that. I think it's necessary. Other towns have put as much as 10, 11, 12% increases. Um, but within that, we're, we're just layering more costs within the town. Behind it is the Medfield State Hospital. Um, I was fortunate to sit in on the on the <coughs> Medicare Hospital Reuse Committee, which is doing an incredibly good job of representing the community and the tough decisions that need to be made on density and and um, you know to to cover the debt, to kind of maximize density to get revenue versus keeping Medfield special. And what I loved about sitting in on that committee is how engaged and and uh, collaborative it was, even when there were disagreements. So I, you know, I look at the amount of projects that are sort of circling over Providence, <laughs> waiting to land here. And you know, this one lands, and there's a couple more coming behind it. Dale Street rumor has it that Guantanamo is going to be replaced with Dale Street. <laughs> so I, I don't know if a lot of people knew that. Um, that building, for anyone who's gone in there, for anyone who advocates for schools, I know the school committee is concerned about it. Um, that's looming right behind this, and it won't be an insignificant investment. So I'd like to get more information on sort of what the, the cost is going to be, um, but it appears that it's being done in a thoughtful way and that the community is engaged. So. Ms. Sullivan. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I definitely support the um, public safety building, without a doubt. Um, I think it's something that we need. We need as a community. Um, my concerns are the, um, the cost, uh, without a doubt. And having had the experience of meeting with the warrant committee, working with the school budget, and actually working with the budget, when someone tells you, this is what you need, this is what your teachers need, and someone comes and tells you, we don't have the money for that. You have to figure out how you're gonna do what you wanna do with less money. I get how hard that <clears throat> is. And after sitting with people from the warrant committee and understanding, how all the town, the town has different competing, you know, things that they need, that you need to spend this money on, and there's a limited amount of money. Um, and everybody feels that their project is important. And believe me, I feel after having, my oldest one is in sixth grade, I've got a fourth grader currently at Dale Street, and I have a third grader. I understand what's going on at Dale Street and the need for a Dale Street um, project as well, and hopefully that will come to fruition. Um, but I definitely think the, the public safety building is something that we need in Medfield. Um, I think it's overdue, um, as was the DPW garage. Um, so I am supportive of the um, public safety building. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Sullivan. Are um, follow-up questions allowed? You're welcome to keep submitting them. They're bringing them all up to me. They would have been better off on a soapbox Excuse me, sir. on the call. Well, you can ask them to do that. I'm, I don't know if they'll consider that. But right now, this is the way that uh, we're going to be doing this. And um, we're actually going to uh, change our topic a little bit, and we're going to talk about the state hospital. Um, we're going to go through all of our um, candidates, and uh, I'd like you to please consider telling us what you feel um, is the most important factor as we move forward what you feel would be the the best outcome the worst outcome uh, kind of just how you're you're thinking about this whole situation and i think we'll switch it up a little bit and uh, we'll start with miss sullivan please 
Okay, well, thank you. Um, as far as the state hospital and my role as um, a current school committee member, I am concerned, obviously, about um, any, any impact that a large development would have on the school systems, um, without a doubt. Um, that would, I think it would impact um, how we do things in Medfield. I think that any kind of large housing development, given that it is so speculative when a development happens, what the impact is going to have, how many children are actually in those developments that then are part of our school system, what that does to our special needs programs, what that does to our curriculum, what that does to class size. Those are extremely important things to, um, to consider when we're thinking about the state hospital development. Um, you know, I think I think being a school committee member, being a parent of young children who are, I was involved in Medfield in the school since my oldest daughter was in preschool. It's something that I am passionate about, I am dedicated to, and I haven't just talked it, I've done it. Um, and so it does concern me that our schools could be possibly negatively impacted by any kind of large um, housing development um, that, would, that would have a lot of kids entering our system that, that needs some you know, we, we do things extremely well here in Medfield. Um, it's a reason why we're one of the top eight school districts. It's a reason why our property values are high and remain high and continue to go up. We do things well, but can we do things better? Absolutely. And I think if you, you have to think about that when you're thinking about um, large projects where a lot of children can enter that school system and tax the school system. So that is my primarily primarily my main, con my main concern as a school committee member. Thank you very much. You. Uh, Mr. Potts. Yeah, I touched on this a little bit before. You know, the committee that's meeting on this, I think, is doing an incredibly good job of balancing these demands. Um, it's a thoughtful process. The uh, consultant that they've um, engaged or in the process of engaging is going through that balancing act of what the right density is um, to bring financial responsibility of generating some revenue from it. Um, versus balancing what the needs are of the community. Um, there's discussion of an arts community center there. Um, there's an understanding that it is a breathtaking place to have a nice vista for recreation along the Charles River. And all of that is being factored in. I have a lot of faith in this committee, mostly because I've seen it in action where there's strong disagreements, but they're done respectfully. And, and actually, that's one of the things that I really respect about how that's working. You've got differing viewpoints, so you've got, you don't have sort of group think happening. And actually, you know, to pivot, that's one of the concerns that I have in looking at the school committee is I don't see enough challenging of ideas, um, of raising issues, of listening thoughtfully. Um, they're dedicated people with good opinions and, and, and great ideas. Um, but I don't see the kind of dialogue that I see in something like the Medfield State Hospital Reuse Committee. So I have a lot of confidence that they're going to come out with a lot of town input. Um, there's certainly going to be a lot of opportunities for us to be engaged. And I think that's when government works at its best. So I'm excited about it. I think it's a great opportunity to pull the community together. Um, and I think that's also what the school committee can be doing. Thank you, Mr. Potts. Mr. Lester. Um, yes, well, we, um, on the planning board, we had, I mean, this has been a long process for us. We had actually been involved uh, more heavily um, back when we, the town was negotiating with the state um, for a reuse plan in the mid-2000s, kind of before which it, it, it all sort of fell apart after the, um, the recession began. Uh, but at that time, I think we, through, through good negotiation and a planning process, we established some good parameters um, that then carried over, including that the development will only be on the core campus and it preserves the agricultural and forest land around um, through the um, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Preserving the sledding hill, that, was, that had been agreed very early on, mm -hmm. that would go to the town long before um, uh, you know, the selectmen got them to sell the whole rest of the parcel to the town. Um, and, um, and, uh, um, and the idea of um, um, preserving as much as possible of the historical character um, and then creating a mix of, of uh, assisted living housing and affordable housing, which uh, 
the, the numbers of affordable housing were sort of calibrated to help the town reach its goals under Chapter 40B. Mm -hmm. So those were all principles that we came up with back then, which sort of got put on hold for about five years, but then now um, that process has picked up again. And like um, Jerry said, the reuse committee has, has done a fantastic job, particularly with pushing the, um, the environmental cleanup, which wasn't as big an issue when we were talking to them, but, um, but it has, it's been a fantastic accomplishment. Going forward, um, right now there's a, a town, a, a, a consultant and a planning process that we're not directly involved with, but we will pick it up again when, uh, because ultimately a, a zoning overlay district will have to be created to facilitate the development um, under the plan that is agreed on. And so then that's where the planning board gets back involved because our job is proposing zoning laws. We'll have it drafted and bring it to a town meeting. Great. Thank you, Mr. Lester. Mr. Peterson? The uh, Medfield State Hospital process has been sort of a, a, an ongoing uh, project for the 15 years that I've been at Selectman. Um, <coughs> First, uh, watching what the state was going to do for many years, and and then actually when the state turned around and uh, 180 degrees and said the town could buy it, trying to figure out whether that made sense for the town to buy it, um, and then seeing whether or not the town meeting would actually be interested in buying it once we had worked out a, a, a deal with the state to buy it. Um, it and, and, and over the course of the years, I've, it's been like a roller coaster in terms of, uh, of my sense of it and, and my expectations from it. I've gotten very discouraged about the condition of the buildings at some times, and, and sometimes I've thought that we just need to tear them all down because it's going to be so expensive to, to rehab or reuse any of them. Um, I've gotten a little more sanguine about maybe the, the possibility of, of reusing some of them more recently. I think that the, the, the most exciting thing has been the in the past maybe uh, six weeks as the uh, committee that's doing the master <coughs> planning for the state hospital has been interviewing the planners, uh, it has just been dramatic to see these people come in and talk about the sort of possibilities that they envision. Uh, I mean, they bring nice graphics, so it's always very colorful and, and, and interesting from that standpoint. But there were, there were um, eight or nine different uh, people that responded to the town's RFP to come forward and, and wanted to help the town plan for this, this uh, site. And the different things that you saw in terms of, of, of what you can get out of it, it I mean, it basically, in, in, as, as I watch it or listen to it, in, in my mind, I, I get it down to a, a level of, it's mainly going to be housing uh, because that is is what people want in Medfield. People don't come to Medfield to build a shopping mall or or a business uh, uh, office building. Uh, they want to be near a, a major highway for that. But what we really are good at is providing housing for people. The issue is can we provide the sort of housing that doesn't have a lot of costs associated with it, and the costs are the school children. And, right. But the opportunities are just wonderful up there. It's very Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McDermott. Well, first, I'll look back and say that the, uh, the, t the I think the town meeting that we had about a year ago, uh, over 1,200 people in the gym to consider the issue of the purchase of the town meeting, I think it was very representative of what we do and well in this town. Uh, the high level of the dialogue, uh, the demonstrated commitment of so many uh, dedicated people, uh, the way in which the town considered uh, both sides of, of that question, I think was... Uh, was great, and we're going to essentially follow the same uh, procedural guidelines in our consideration a week from Monday for the uh, for the for the public uh, safety building. Uh, just a, a couple of I don't want to comment too much because it, you know if the creek don't rise someday, I actually may be moderating a meeting with some of these issues uh, uh, will be considered in a very tangible and concrete way. Mm -hmm. uh, and but uh, you know some of the things that I that I can't help but to think of is that the, in terms of priority, I think we need to recover our investment. We need to make sure that we uh, we turn that for the town uh, into an asset and, and for it not to be a liability. Um, I think that we need to consider carefully all these questions of impact on, uh, on town services and the, and the schools. And uh, from, a, from a distance in terms of everything, the people I'm talking to, the, my observations, you know, we have a, it's an extraordinary piece of property, so, uh, and that seems to be high in the mind of the people who are involved with it, and we have extraordinary people who are putting an enormous amount of time into, into, into a, a whole process to try to f figure out the right thing to do. And, uh, I guess when that's determined, uh, we'll be we'll be considering that at town meeting. Yeah. Great, thank you, Mr. McDermott. Uh, Mr. Sweeney. Our problem again is uh, we see more monies being funded for the Farmer State Hospital and the Master Plan study. Also, there's going to be 
um, we own it now, we're going to have to secure it, so we're going to have to pay for that. There have been some proposals of disposition of surplus equipment up there, but that's, to me it's not sustaining. And I don't know how long it's going to take before they're going to do anything up there because uh, I, I don't know, I really don't know. And that's where we kind of, we, we're just testing the waters and saying, you know, be careful. Okay. And what you appropriate, and if you're appropriating right, the right amount of money, because you can, you can always come back. <coughs> this is coming back again on the certain things on the, on the uh, town garage. We're not done yet, believe me. Thank you very much. All <coughs> right, we have a few um, more questions uh, that are directed towards our contested race for the school committee, and then uh, each candidate will have the opportunity after we finish those questions to um, make a final statement of about a minute and a half or so. We have um, two that are very similar, so I'm going to combine them, and it's um, for the school committee candidates. Um, you are both very qualified candidates for a school uh, committee. What differences, if any, can you describe between your priorities and approaches, and why are you the most qualified candidate to serve on the school committee? <coughs> We're just going to combine those two. Um, Ms. Sullivan, why don't you begin, please? Okay, well, thank you very much. And um, why, while I would agree um, that we are both um, good candidates, I think um, I am definitely the most qualified to be um, dealing with the schools. I have actually been in the schools. I've done a lot of other things in my life, but I have actually um, walked the walk in this situation. I have been CSA um, <coughs> president, I have been secretary, I've been on site council, superintendent advisory councils. I've actually searched for principals, searched for the superintendent. I've worked with the budget. I've actually done um, the work that it takes to be a school committee member. Um, I think I am passionate about um, the schools and I disagree with Mr. Potts in that we are a very um, good group of people. We are a good group of people. Not only are we are just dedicated and passionate about education, we work well together. We work well with other, um, other groups in the community, the warrant committee, um, the police and fire. Um, and I think the thing that separates me is that I have actually done the work um, already. And I think I've done it really well. Um, if you ask anyone about my tenure as CSA president on the school committee, um, the things that I am passionate about, I have always been passionate about from the time that I was a career as a prosecutor until my um, time here in Medfield. I am passionate about children and protecting what's important for the whole child. Um, and that includes education, that includes um, you know, seeing what they do outside of school, the whole child, um, how they are with sports, how they are with the arts, their music, what interests, and it's different for all children. Um, and I think we do that well here in Medfield, um, but there's always room for improvement. Um, when we think there isn't room for improvement, we're doing something wrong. Um, so, and I think every single member of that board believes that in their heart, that there's, we do it well, and we definitely do things well, but we are definitely can do things better, and um, we have that vision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Potts. Well, obviously, I think I'm more qualified, and, and uh, Dr. Marzen, when he came in, specifically mentioned that he wanted to start running the schools and take best practices in business and start applying them to the schools. Uh, a historical, when a superintendent comes in is making significant changes, doing what we've done for years with a superintendent who was there for 19 years, Dr. Marsden is saying more business practices and more data intensive decision making. Both of those are exactly what I've done for 30 years in business. I focus on business strategy, um, my position at MFS, I'm involved in doing uh, analytics, business intelligence, I teach business strategy. We're about to enter into a process of doing a long-term strategic plan, which we currently don't have. Um, so I think I'm very focused on the process that's needed to be able to align the tough decisions, um, the collection of data from all of you who are you know, so critical to this process. I do need to go back on one thing which I completely disagree with Marianne on. The, the superintendent goals are not the district goals. The entry plan that the superintendent put forward, the Mass Association School Committee and Department of Education, it's very clear there are levels of goals. The school committee goals, which we don't have. 
district goals, which are not the superintendent's goals. They're not on the website. They're not published anywhere. Now, if, if we need money to be able to communicate our goals openly and objectively to the community, we have a problem because that's why we're making decisions on allocation of resources. We have some major issues going on right now where student stress is at all time levels. The focus on high performing academic, I, I get it, but we have student stress issues. We've got the MCATS park discussion with core curriculum, um, the common core. None of this is being discussed at the, at the school committee. So if we're looking for new ideas for our schools, then experience on what we've done in the past doesn't give us that. I've got experience from outside. I can bring best practices, and that's what I've done. If you go to my website, you can see for yourself the best practices on what school committees are doing right now, and ours aren't. Thank you very much. Um, our next question is, what do you feel the school committee needs to do to improve? And there was a sub-question as far as process or info flow. And Mr. Potts, we'll start with you this time, then we'll go to Ms. Sullivan. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it started back because there's one other point. So every one of our peer group towns that Dr. Marzen and the school committee compares ourselves to have found a way to get this information online to parents. I, I'm not understanding why a webmaster is needed to communicate goals, to put a plan in place. We have outstanding school improvement plans. Those are posted online. So the process that we're going through right now, um, I, I, I have to be honest, I think the superintendent's doing a great job. I think our teachers are doing a phenomenal job right now. But I don't think we're doing enough in engaging this community in the significant issues that are going on in education right now. There's a revolution happening in tons of places. Um, school start times, Duxbury just moved it to much later in the day and they're seeing astronomical increase in performance academically just by moving later to better get the students rested and ready to do the day. Dover Sherburn right now is studying that intensely. They've got a wonderful website that has incredible resources that I encourage you again, link from my site, go see what they're doing. Okay, so we, business as usual and sort of incremental changes, that's not what Dr. Marzen's doing with technology. I'm not sure where the role of the school committee in leading to this type of thinking um, is. Other towns that we compare ourselves to that perform well academically are finding ways to engage the community. The educator evaluation system that's in place right now. Dr. Marzen's plan, it was one of the biggest areas the teachers were concerned about. Hopkinton has a whole section on their website for their teachers in dealing with what this process is and what it means, okay? Um, you know, finally, I think when we're looking as parents, we've got all kinds of competing needs. And the only way that you really can make a decision on whether or not the school committee is working for you is understanding what their goals are. And right now, the school committee, I agree Dr. Marzen has goals, but I don't know what the school committee's goals are. And I think that that's a major flaw. Thank you very much, Mr. Potts. <coughs> Ms. Sullivan. Um, thank you. Um, Again, I, um, I agree that there are aspects that we can do better. I think our website could be better. I, there's no doubt about that. Um, I think there, um, there are ways that we can improve. But I think what Mr. Potts is definitely missing is that we do things well. Um, I think as a district, um, our school committee meetings are always open to the public. I know I've seen you recently just this year at school committee meetings. They are televised. Anyone is always invited to attend our meetings. Um, the process, the plans, policies are now online. And Five. I can say this because... Five of them. They, out of, out of over 100. The Mr. Potts, you'll have it. Okay. The, the policies that have been reviewed by our legal department and are up to standard are online. Um, there is a process for things. I think also um, in the short time that I've been a school committee member, the difference in the superintendents between what, um, what Dr. Marsden has been able to do, and although I respect um, you know, Mr. McGuire so much, I enjoyed working with him, the, the difference in taking a critical eye at the district and what we do has improved dramatically between the transparency and the budget, working with other um, committees, um, getting that mm. online, the explanation of the budget and, how, and our input into the budget was amazing in the last couple of years. Um, I hadn't experienced that before with Dr. McGuire. Um, and I think, can our communication improve? Absolutely. I think our communication has improved. If you look at the, the blogs and the, the input that 
the actual meetings have, I think it has been um, amazing. I think we do look at, um, we have looked at the elementary school day. Um, so we are innovative if you're looking. I think a district can't be measured and what we do can't be measured by a website alone. I think you have to look at what we do, what we accomplish, and who we are. And that says what our district does. Thank you. Thank you. So since this seems to be um, something of intense interest to both of you, I think I'm get, we'll give each of you a minute to then rebut as well. So Mr. Potts, would you uh, like a minute? Yeah, the, um, thank you. This is not about a website. Um, this is about transparency. I agree the superintendent is doing an excellent job. Each of the principals have their blogs. The school committee voice, though, is missing here. So let's go through it. Um, in mid-February, minutes weren't published from September was the last one. So as far as transparency, I went to try to understand, and I've actually gone back a few years now with Medfield TV. Um, when you look at fundamental documents, the agenda being published, the documents that are part of the presentations that are presented to the school committee, are not part of that process. Um, so I do think the process matters not because of a website, because it's transparency to the community about how decisions are being made. And I think that's one of the core responsibilities for the school committee is to clearly outline what our objectives are and how we're measuring them. Finally, I don't see metrics. Other than MCATs, when we're looking at it, there are a number of different ways that we could look at performance of the, of the schools. And I'd love to share a little bit more about that, but it's beyond MCATs, it's beyond standardized testing. There's a lot that goes in that other towns are doing in a creative way to make sure wellness of the students, the teachers, which by the way, don't have a contract right now, that each of the audiences that we serve, um, that we've got a good indication of how they're feeling about things. Thank you, um, Mr. Potts. Um, and I have Ms. Sullivan, yep, you have thank you. a minute too. Um, okay, um, thank you very much. Um, I want to say that this is the first time in my three years of being on the school committee that the budget is online, policies that have been reviewed um, and sent through legal and updated have actually been online. And if you look back in our minutes, and not that I'm criticizing anyone who, um, the predecessors to um, this tenure, but Minutes of our, our meetings have not been online. We have been doing that and trying to keep up with that. Um, as far as it's inaccurate to say the teachers don't have a contract, um, they are working under a contract. Our collecting, collective bargaining agreement with the teachers has not, it was ratified in um, last year. Um, and then over the summer, it, it failed the vote to ratify it. But um, we have, I've been into, integral in that process and working with the, um, the teachers union. Um, so I think you have to look at um, more than just the rhetoric of what we are not doing, um, although I agree that there are things that we can do better. Um, could our website be better? Um, could we do things faster? Absolutely. Um, could we get all the policies up? We don't want the policies up until they're reviewed and we know that they adhere to the law that they have been reviewed by our legal counsel and that we agree with the policies. We have a lot of things happening um, with the school policies, so I think that that's a process. Thank you. In the, uh, the last uh, teacher contract, over three years, the teachers earned a two and three quarter percent uh, and um, Medville teachers are currently working without a contract. Uh, negotiations have thus far failed to resolve the issues. What do you see as your responsibility in resolving the issues and what would you anticipate as a framework for a resolution? Um, and I'm hoping that both of you can give us an answer that goes beyond waiting for mediation to give us a resolution. We'll start with Ms. Sullivan. This will be two minutes, it's not the rebuttal, so. Um, thank you, and I'd be interested um, to find out, although I'm sure I won't, who actually asked that question, because in Massachusetts, it is illegal for teachers to work without a contract. The teachers are working under a contract. It's the, it's the previous contract that they are working under. In fact, the teachers, um, at the end of the last contract period, got a 0.5% increase in their salary. So the teachers this year have received a 0.5% increase to their salary. So the teachers actually are working under their old contract. It is illegal to work without a contract. And when you see teachers strike, they are striking illegally. 
Um, so it is, it is not, that is not the case um, here in Medfield. Have we agreed to a current contract? No, we have not. Um, but I can tell you after working on that contract and going through interest-based bargaining that both sides have agreed to. And believe me, I, I, these teachers that teach my children, I put them, I put my children with these teachers. These teachers are important to me. These teachers are my friends. They are people that I have entrusted with my children. They are people that when my parents have passed away over the last two years, they have not only been there for my children, they've been there for me. These are people that I feel passionately about. If I had all the money in the world, believe me, there are people, every single person on that committee would give those teachers exactly what they want. And, and I, I dare anyone to say differently about the people that are on that Medfield School Committee. We value those teachers, we, we believe in what they do, and we are passionate about it. And so, but the problem is, we have to be fiscally responsible. We don't have a money tree in the back. There are a lot of things happening in the town, as you've heard tonight. I personally would love to have teachers making more than what I see professional baseball players making and hockey players, and I probably shouldn't have said baseball in midfield, but <laughs> there are a lot of people that I think deserve to be paid a lot more than what they are being paid, and that I am passionate about it. But we have to be fiscally responsible. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Potts, two minutes. Uh, my brother has been a teacher at Dover Sherburn for 38 years. Um, he's been involved in their collective bargaining process. Um, and I've talked to him extensively um, about getting his perspective on the process. Um, for whatever reason, we haven't had uh, collective bargaining where the teachers go to mediation for years. And in September in the school committee, when it was brought up that the other three collective bargaining agreements were being settled and the school um, Dr. Marzen said he couldn't understand why this is in September and that they were very close and we're sitting here in March and we haven't been able to figure out how to take care of our teachers. As I've gone around town, um, there is not one resource or asset that this town values more than its teachers. And so I agree with Marianne on that process. I'm just frustrated that we put a budget for it at 5.4% increase before we had this taken care of. Um, and and I, there are other towns and other things that we are doing, such capital improvements like school fields and banned uniforms for 45000 which I understand are capital expenses, but there is real money there. So it seems to me that we need to find a way. We, we tout that we have the lowest per capita spending, and we say this over and over again, and I'm proud that we are fiscally responsible and we don't have a website to communicate openly with our, with our parents. And we haven't found a way to get our teachers paid yet. So it's good that we're being fiscally responsible, but the two most important things that I think the school committee is responsible for is making sure we have great teachers and that our parents know what's going on with the school. So whatever amount of money we need to spend to communicate openly with our, with our parents to make sure that they understand what's going on, I just, I don't understand why <coughs> Bonnie's question about um, the, the they do not have a current contract. So are they getting paid? Do they have a contract? Yes. We can say is, is, and as a lawyer, I'm sure the words matter. But most of us, yeah. our teachers know right now that they do not have a current contract. And I think we owe them an answer, and I think we owe them the respect, um, you know, to get this taken care of. Okay. Great. Do you um, have a minute rebuttal for that? If you'd like, you guys both want a, a minute rebuttal? We can do a minute rebuttal. Go ahead, Ms. Sullivan. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so when, I, when um, the school mm -hmm. committee and um, the teachers union negotiated the contract, I can tell you from personal experience and being at that table that that contract and the language that was in that contract was excellent for both sides. The teachers, the elementary school teachers, and I will be very direct when I say, our elementary schools had some cracks in the foundation before Dr. Marston started here. Without a doubt, they have some cracks in the foundation. And it was important for us and important for the teachers to rectify some of those cracks in the foundation with the language that was put into that contract. And we did that with the first contract. And that contract broke down over money. And in, 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 in this budget experience that I have had, you have to be fiscally responsible. There is only so much money that you have. And when Jerry talks about the 5.4% increase, we agree to that. And when you go back to the Warren Committee, we have to figure out ways how to decrease that budget because that is not going to work. And that is not going to work for the town. 
So that's what we are working on now. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Potts. So this is where goals become critical because coming into the school year, if the district had goals related to the collective bargaining, when you go to the budget and there aren't district goals that are related to that budget, you're making a laundry list of decisions on things that are valuable. If we say as a, as a, a community that paying our teachers and ensuring that the teacher satisfaction with Medfield is high, then that has to be one of the stated goals, just like wellness of our kids has to be one of the goals. And there are ways to measure that. So I'm surprised we don't do outreach more often. Nat Vaughn is doing a great job with the middle school, but we can ask the teachers on a regular basis how they're doing and factor that into the metrics that we're using to evaluate the schools. We can also factor in the wellness of the kids and factor that in, the stress levels that they're under right now. And that, that data should be in a balanced scorecard that we can look at. So coming into the year approving a 5.4% budget without having the contract negotiated um, with the teachers, that should have been part of the discussion. So I agree the budget process um, w was better, but not having the teacher contract um, as part of the budget process and understanding that you'd be boxing yourself into a corner, I think has worked against us. Thank you, Mr. Potts. I think what we'll do is we'll conclude, conclude with everybody having two minutes uh, for a final statement. Um, and I would particularly appreciate it if you would also, um, since this has come up, think about um, your department uh, and um, how town departments continue um, to limit their budgets to minimal increases and what's at stake for your um, department if it must continue to do so. Uh, we'll um, start with uh, Mr. Sweeney, please. This is another discussion we've been going through and it's, our department's pretty, pretty vanilla. You know, you've, you've got certain things that have to be accomplished through both uh, mandates from the state uh, like the revaluation. What we do is we appropriate so much money each year, so by the third year, revaluation comes around, we've got the money to, to go through the process. That works out well, but that's the biggest thing. The new assessor coming on, I don't think we're gonna have any problems with that. She's uh, really uh, made her own already in two weeks. Um, and the big thing is that uh, we just have to be ready for town meeting and for people to be really acknowledge, get them to, so that they know what's going on, what, what finances are gonna happen, what's gonna, ha with the dollar, you're gonna pay it, I'm gonna pay it, no matter what it's gonna be, so, and everybody doesn't like the impact, there's gonna be an impact, I don't, I can't tell you how much it's gonna be, but I'm not gonna say there isn't gonna be an impact, so. Uh, that's really all I have to say. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, Ms. McDermott. Well, in terms of budget, I have the, the interesting responsibility of presiding over an article every year that sets my salary at zero dollars. And, <laughs> and uh, it hasn't changed over time. So uh, there's not much, of, not much to talk about in terms of budget. But there is a lot to talk about in terms of, you know, urging people in town to come to town meeting, in, in, you know, in my view. And, and rather than kind of look out at the audience, because I uh, would be preaching to the converted of the folks that are here tonight, you know, looking at the people at home, it's, there's, there's a number of reasons that I always try to articulate why they should come. First of all, you are part of a legislative body. You get an opportunity to participate in that process, in a legislative process, and you get an opportunity to vote, and you get an opportunity to vote on issues that have a very immediate impact, our schools, our public safety, uh, open space in town so I think it's an extraordinary uh, element we also it's an exercise of you know really of democratic process and uh, you know what's more important in this world today than us demonstrating to the rest of the world that we have these democratic processes that we're committed to and that they're open and uh, they're accessible to uh, all people to participate in we have this amazing tradition of history in this town uh, which I think that every time we have a town meeting we perpetuate and we continue and how important that is it goes back if you read the town histories to these extraordinary meetings, town meetings where they conscripted soldiers to go uh, to get to a Bunker Hill and uh, and all the way through history with all of the, the, the kind of the decisions that have made as history kind of came and went and, and every year that we do the town meeting 
we add to uh, 300 and whatever it is, 60 some odd consecutive years of conducting our affairs in that way. Uh, we, we always uh, get an opportunity to be able to sh show the town the extraordinary talent of our high school, uh, high school musicians uh, before. We've been, that's a tradition that I started years ago and we'll continue with each of these town meetings and it's, it's great for the people to, to see what kind of talent we have. They see it on the playing field and here's a public opportunity for all folks to see it. I have more and more of these kinds of things but you know it's I think lastly uh, to do something as a community has been proven to be something that brings great satisfaction uh, to people to make decisions as a community to behave as a you know as a you know as a true community as opposed to you know a, a, a kind of a collection of individuals and that's what happens at town meeting even if there's disagreement at the end of the day we come to a decision you know as a community and finally as, as Tom said it, it's really a great place to learn about what goes on in town and to also to put your support behind the people who volunteer so much time to you know to make it happen so please come Thank you, Mr. McDermott. Let's just remind everybody of those dates since yes, we've had so, that. Uh, on Monday, March 23rd, we'll have our special uh, town meeting, mm -hmm. two articles to consider. Yeah, each of them requires a two-thirds vote and hope that we have a, you know, a good attendance. We have a quorum of 250, and yep. I hope we uh, certainly break through that early so we can start the meeting on time. And then on uh, April 27th, we have our annual town meeting. Absolutely. Okay, great. Mr. Peterson. Thank you. I, I'll just quickly run down a lot of my personal goals as a selectman and, and, and how I've worked on those over the <clears> years. The first one was to create access to town government and inf information um, so that now we have predictable uh, meeting dates for the selectmen. So we meet on the first and the third and the fourth uh, Tuesdays of the month. Uh, we don't meet on the fourth Tuesday during the summer. but. So there's predictability about the meetings. Uh, the meeting agendas are now done in advance and, and put up on the website so people can see what the, what the uh, selectmen are doing ahead of time. The minutes are getting done. The, when, it, when I found out that the uh, Medfield TV had put a new unit in this room that had a hard disk in it, I immediately asked Medfield TV if we couldn't take the recordings and put them online. They said, yes, we can do that. And so now all the Medfield selectmen's meetings are on, uh, on YouTube. I guess you can see them anywhere in the world. Um, a second goal was the uh, importance of getting the information uh, that I learned out to people, um, and I have I've worked on that mainly by by getting the the town information that I just talked about out in terms of minutes, but also in terms of my own blog that that goes out to people. I try to keep up to date uh, on uh, town issues and municipal and other laws. I attend other board meetings. Uh, that I see that as one of the things that. You agree to do as a selectman to go to these meetings of the uh, master planning committee for the hospital or whatever committee meeting it is. Uh, I go a couple times, uh, several times a year actually to, to Mass Municipal Association uh, meetings. I confer with the state legislators. I, one of my goals has always been to have an independent judgment and, uh, I, and I've just tried to have that all along. I've always tried to explore new ideas, whether it's the paramedic service or how we can afford uh, 40 Bs by having an affordable housing. I've tried to ask the difficult questions when I thought they needed to be asked. Uh, the first time the, host the uh, town garage was presented to the town, uh, I didn't think the case had been made and, and said so and opposed it. And I've tried to advocate for our town and its citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Lester. Uh, thanks, Bonnie. Well, on the budget question, mm -hmm. we're sort of like um, Scott said, um, we don't have a lot of inherent budget in the planning board. We do have a very a town planner, Sarah Raposa, who does a great job assisting us and the ZBA. Um, and so there's her salary. Um, but then a couple few years ago, oh, well, well, another budget item is that um, for all projects that come before us, um, there's, we typically have engineering peer review from an engineering firm, but the beauty of that is that, um, in other words, they review the, the applicant's engineering submission. The beauty of this is that we adopted rules a few years ago that the applicants basically pay for that, so uh, through the application fees. So it's <laughs> so, so we're sort of a pay-as-you-go on the budget, um, other than other than um, Sarah's salary. The um, but uh, in terms of goals, um, when I first came on the board. There was kind of a perception that development was out of control in town and there were a lot of negative environmental impacts from sort of massive subdivisions being clear cut and bulldozed. And um, so I, you know, what my original goals were just establishing more standards, preserving um, uh, a, a more of a character to the town and, and 
promoting open space and trails. And I'm very proud of the fact I think we've done that with subdivisions. We've um, been much stricter with enforcing the rules that were already in our books, but they were just regularly waived. Um, and so in terms of length of cul-de-sacs, road design, um, um, I think we've done some very positive things. And then on the commercial development, I'm very proud of what we've done in the downtown. We've always tried to promote positive business development and attractive, uh, and att to make it attractive in the town. And so I think everyone would agree our downtown has improved and looks good um, with, the, with the projects um, that we've put in place. We also have, um, um, we're improving uh, the zoning laws every year. We kind of incrementally do some of those things. And lastly, I would just say, um, What's, what's been helpful is I think th there's a lot of institutional knowledge that you build up where an issue comes up now that maybe came up in an application 10 years ago and so I'm proud of being able to contribute by just sort of remembering and maintaining consistency in the decisions um, and standards we apply. Thank you, Mr. Lester. Uh, Mr. Potts. Um, you know, I think that as we stand here today, the schools are under more pressure than they've ever been. Um, there are more changes that are happening today around academics, around education, policies for the kids. Our kids are under incredible pressure. Um, you know, I'm excited to run because over the past few weeks, I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of you about what you're concerned about. And there's obviously pride in the Medfield schools, but there is a feeling that we're putting so much pressure on these kids and we're not, we're not giving them, when there's discussion about the whole child, I don't see that as one of the goals and objectives that's articulated. And I think that's one of the most important. The second thing which I haven't had an opportunity to talk about is low income, kids with special needs. We need to do a lot better as a community. Our reputation for special needs, for support of special needs students is not particularly good in other towns. I, I will be candid with that if you talk to the reputation, we just placed a $300,000 out of district placement on a special needs situation. And this becomes a budget issue. There are a number of school districts that are putting a major focus on special needs, not just because it's right, but because it saves money. So it's right for the community, it's right for our students to understand that you treat people with respect. When you have a $300,000 placement outside of the district, that costs us money number one, but it also says a lot for us as a community about what our values are. So I think we can do better for low income. My father left when I was seven, my mother raised four kids in Dover, Sherman, and I will tell you, living in an affluent community, when you do not literally two summers in a row when I was in seventh and eighth grade, we lived off of what I made working construction. Low income people in this town deserve every bit the things that we all take for granted. They can't afford tutors. They can't get there at 7.30 for music in the morning because both of the parents are working and trying to make a living. So I think that there is a huge amount that we can do as a school committee and as a, as a community overall to do better. And I am passionate about that. I've spent 11 years with the Medfield Youth Baseball and Softball, literally coaching hundreds of kids and running an organization that touches the lives of many people. So I've been on fields endlessly, fundraising, the Lions Club, the Zulo Gallery, uh, I've been involved in this community for years, and I would very much appreciate your support in trying to bring the best that we can be for our schools. See for yourself, go to my site, look at the other towns and what they're doing. We can do better. Thank you, Mr. Potts. And Ms. Sullivan. Um, so I want to end the evening by saying thank you very much for having me. Um, and I think um, my vision for the district, I know Mr. Potts had talked about um, the business decisions and the data and the numbers. Um, I am passionate about children. I have always been passionate about children. Um, I think, despite what some of the high schools might tell you, they are vulnerable. Um, they are the most vulnerable members of our society um, and the elderly. And I think that they need our passion, our support. Um, I have proven my dedication to the children of this district from the time that um, my child entered preschool and entered the Medfield Public Schools. Um, and I agree, I believe that there's more to a chi child or not business, children are not business decisions and sets of data. They are people and they, there is a whole person that we need to look at. Um, and they're not on a website, but when you go into a school and you go into any of the Medfield public schools, you can see amazing things that teachers are doing, that the students are doing, um, and they're doing it well. I think to answer your question, which I don't believe Mr. Potts had answered, this, the, the problem um, with limited budgets and the, the specific problem that the school committee faces is how do we preserve the things that we value? 
How do we preserve the teachers that the school committee in this town value so much on limited, on limited budgets? Um, I think it is a constant problem for, um, for us and for the town. Um, I think that we have to provide creative um, and challenging opportunities for those children that might need our support and bring them up a bit. And for those children who are at the very top who still need to be challenged um, in our public school system. Um, I think Medfield does that well. I think there are always um, room for improvement. Um, so I think those are some of the challenges with limited budgets. Um, and I ask for your vote. I've done a great job, um, and I look forward to continuing to do a great job for the children of Medfield. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Um, I'd like to conclude the evening by reminding everybody that on uh, Monday, March 23rd at 7.30 p.m., the Medfield High School, is it in, going to be in the auditorium or the gym? <laughs> is that a joke, no. <laughs> yeah, though? The, it's, it's going to be the gym. Okay. Well, you know, you never can. All right. In the gym, uh, the usual place for town meeting, uh, for this special town meeting, um, and um, at 7.30, and then on March 30th, I would like to remind everybody uh, there is voting at the, um, uh, the center on Ice House Road from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And lastly, uh, our annual town meeting on Monday, April 27th at 7.30. Get there early if you'd like to hear um, some great music by our high school musicians. Uh, and also just to thank uh, our candidates this evening, uh, Mr. Sweeney, Tom Sweeney, uh, candidate for assessor, uh, Scott McDermott, candidate for town moderator, Osler Pete Peterson, our candidate for selectman, George Lester, candidate for planning board, Jerry Potts, candidate for school committee, Marianne Sullivan, candidate for school committee. Uh, all of our uh, audience here, uh, the um, all those who attend town meeting, all those who vote, uh, you know, because um, just thanking everybody because you know democracy and excellence, you know, they're not um, an accident. They, you know, it takes uh, careful work and um, careful planning. And I appreciate everybody doing their bit. So thank you very much and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Roberta Lynch and you're watching Medfield.tv.